guys, it's Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I have never done before, but I feel like this year is the year that I need to do it. And I'm going to tell you my least favorite books of 2017. 2017 gave me a lot of really disappointing reads. I have eight to talk about today. Now they're not necessarily like really bad books or books that I gave one star. They were just the most disappointing. So things that I had really high expectations for and did not deliver. Fortunately, they were a lot of books that I was really looking forward to and that I was excited about, and that is the worst type of disappointment. And I don't necessarily want to put a disclaimer on here because I feel like you should know that I'm not personally attacking you if you like any of these books. They're just books that me, personally, on my channel, did not like. So with that being said, this list is in no particular order. So the first one I have in my pile here is Reign of Serpents by Eleanor Herman. This is the third book in the Blood of Gods and Royals, and if you remember when I read the first two, I absolutely loved them. I was recommending the series to absolutely everybody. They actually made it into my top favorite books of 2016. So I was very invested in the series, and unfortunately, this book just fell super flat for me. The pacing was all over the place. I felt like things that should have been wrapped up quickly were dragged out throughout the entire book and things that I felt deserved more time were wrapped up within paragraphs and I think the problem is that originally this was supposed to be a six book series and it had been cut down to four books. Pacing was obviously going to be an issue and it was really evident in here. The main villain of the series is wrapped up within paragraphs and then this ominous villain that has been lurking in the background is suddenly thrust to the forefront in the last like chapter of this book. All of a sudden they're a big problem but when before we knew nothing about them. We still don't know anything about them but now they're a big problem. I did not like it. I was so disappointed by this book. The first two books I gave five out of five stars and this one very middle of the road. Very underwhelming and makes me very hesitant for the final book. Next I have Vicious by V. E. Schwab which I was very excited for. I'm very sad that it's on this list because I really wanted to love it. It had so many things about it that really resonate with me. Two people who were best friends in college and who were working on a senior thesis together to try to give themselves superhero powers and they ultimately succeed. As a result of that, they become arch enemies. One ends up in prison, one ends up a hero, and this takes place 10 years after that. I was so bored throughout the majority of this book. I felt the same way with this Savage Song. Concepts of her books are always so intriguing. However, she spends so much of the books doing character development and character analysis and I get that she's a character driven writer and that's where the issue lies is that I need more plot than what she gives us. The plot does not kick in until the last 15% of the book and by then it's too late. I don't care anymore. I've been bored for so long. I always end up enjoying that last 10%. There's just not enough plot for me personally. Like I need more and it's just always hanging in the background and it's what I'm always the most interested in and it doesn't get addressed until way too late for me. So unfortunately, Victoria Schwab is just not an author that I jive with. With, and I don't think I'll be reading anything else by her because I've had the same issue with both of her books. Next on my list is Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes, which is the fifth book in the Fallen Kingdom series, which is a series that I've had a lot of ups and downs with. I was so invested at the end of the fourth book. So I was very excited for Crystal Storm, and this book was a hot mess. Pacing was all off, all the character relationships took 10 steps backward. This magic finally made an appearance in the world, but it came in way too late for something that we've been talking about for five books and it just like appeared out of nowhere and there's so much to wrap up in the last book and there are now so many character POVs and it just makes me feel that the sixth book is gonna be a train wreck. The pacing is already an issue for me throughout the whole series. I'm also not a fan of her writing style. It's very tell. There's not a lot of show happening. So unfortunately, a series that I was very much looking forward to reading and very much hoping to be like a Throne of Glass series for me has let me down consistently. This was just not Good. The next one on my list is Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. I had a lot of issues with Passenger. In Wayfarer, the time traveling is much more utilized and is much more present, so I have to give it that. Her writing style is so slow. It's like trudging through quicksand. It's so dense. 
for what it is. It is a YA novel and the writing is just so dense. And it's not even like flowery writing or lyrical beautiful writing. It's like bogs down the story. I got nothing out of this book. The ending didn't even save it for me. At least the ending of Passenger was enough for me but at the end of this book I was just like very underwhelmed and I really didn't like it. It was so unenjoyable. I had the same issue with The Darkest Minds. Fortunately, it's another author that I just cannot see myself enjoying any of their works. Next on my list is The Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan. This is supposed to be a YA thriller mystery type of story. It involves a shipwreck at the very beginning of the novel and the shipwreck only has three survivors. Two of them are lying, one is telling the truth. The person who's telling the truth is the one who is cast aside and the people who have been lying about the incident are like in the media and they're famed. And I was very excited for this because Trina from Between Chapters really, really enjoyed it and I really trust Trina's opinion, but unfortunately this book was just not for me. I felt like what she chose to share with us and what she chose to keep a secret were very strange choices. There could have been decisions made in this book to make the suspense more suspenseful was not a good word choice. Like right at the beginning, we know which of the two best friends survives the sinking of the ship and which one dies. And we know that the one girl takes on her friend's identity as a way to get back at the people who sunk the ship and to solve the mystery of why the ship sunk in the first place. It's a cruise liner that, that sinks. We had not known which girl lived and which girl died and that had been kept secret till the end. I feel like that would have made such a large impact on the story. I also would have liked to not know which of the three characters was lying and telling the truth because that took away so much of the suspense too because you were instantly suspicious of the other characters because you knew that they were supposed to be suspicious. So you never grew attached to them. And it was just weird because she's trying to force this relationship between the two characters. You can't ship it and you don't want to because you know that they're lying. It's very weird and I wish that she would have made different choices essentially and it would have made the whole suspense so much better. There are some orange tabs in here so I was still surprised by some plot twists but it was not enough to make up for what I felt was lacking from the story. Next on my list is A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. It is a historical fiction novel about a young girl who is put into a mental institution in the 18. 80s -ish, because she's pregnant out of wedlock. She meets this doctor while she is at the insane asylum and he helps her escape and she travels with him to a different state and helps him solve murders because he is very interested in crime solving and things like that. It was so boring and the mysteries and the suspense was so lackluster. I didn't find anything about this book to be spooky or to be suspenseful. I didn't much like Grace. I didn't much like her relationship with the doctor. I really wanted more from the mystery crime aspect of the novel, but it really is more of a character story for Grace to explore her character arc and her growth. And that's really not what I was interested in because like I mentioned, I didn't like Grace. Also, I thought that Grace made some super stupid decisions for someone who's so, who's supposed to be so smart, made very dumb decisions regarding the murderer and the crime they were solving and I just it was very hard for me to believe that someone who was supposed to be so intelligent would do these things. You feel like Mindy McGinnis was trying to make some kind of social commentary throughout this book. It felt like it was supposed to be poignant and there's supposed to be like a larger discussion at hand very similar to how she wrote The Female of the Species but this was her book prior to that was much more subdued and I didn't pick up on it at all. I didn't know what it was but I felt like it was there. It just wasn't overt enough to be influential in my opinion. So all in all, the main thing I have taken away from this book is that it was boring. Next on my list is a book that I read shortly after A Madness So Discreet and unfortunately they had so many of the same issues that I hated this book so much. And that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, a book that I was looking forward to and so excited to read. It was getting so much positive buzz on booktube about a young girl who lives in London in the 1800s, works underneath her uncle who is a mortician. She gets involved with the Jack the Ripper killings. I was so unbelievably bored with this book. I ended up DNFing it. I read about half of the book in the print version. Then the library took it back. So then I checked out the audio and I listened to about 60% of the audio because I had to start from the beginning because I did not remember anything that I had read. 
even though I had just read it. The library took it, copy back again. Still at 60% into the novel, like nothing about Jack the Ripper is talked about. A couple murders that have happened, but connections of the murders are not being made. It's so boring. For being what it is, it is so boring. Also, people talk about Audrey Rose as being this really feminist main character who is strong and intelligent and revolutionary for her time. But she talks about social conformity so much. She's like, oh, well, the young ladies are out there sipping their tea when I'd rather be in the laboratory cutting open dead bodies. And that makes me a better person. Like she was putting down every single other woman character for being what that time period wanted them to be. Like they were upholding that society's idea of womanhood and she was bashing all of them because they weren't living the same lifestyle as she was. I didn't like it. It made me so angry. And also for a character who wants to break social bounds so much, she so often kept saying in her mind how she should be obeying social constructs. She's like, oh, well, I'm not obeying the social contract, but I really should be, and I'm trying to be a better lady, but I really don't want to be a better lady. So it was just a lot of contradiction of back and forth, like, does she want to be a proper lady? Does she not? She needed to just go for it and just be rebellious or shut up about it. Constant girl hate towards other girls was just too much for me and I just really did not like this book. I hate Audrey Rose. She drives me insane. Unfortunately, one of my least favorite characters that I've ever had to read from, which is very odd because so many people love her and I don't get it. So that's probably one of my top disappointing books of the year, but it is not the most disappointing book. For me, that is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. was so disappointed by this book. It makes me so very upset to say that because Cassandra Clare is an author that I have been reading for years. The fact that I don't like this series, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't like Cassandra Clare's newest series. Dark Artifices, like Lady Midnight, I gave five stars and I really enjoyed. But since reading this and being so disappointed in this, I don't think I feel right about giving Lady Midnight five stars. I only gave this book like a three star and I would give it lower. I just... I don't feel right about giving Cassandra Clare's books two stars, even though I feel like that's probably where this would fall in actuality. I was so bored by it, and yet there were things that I felt were so glossed over and were so unexplained that needed to be, and I just felt like there was so much extra stuff put in here. There were moments where it dragged forever, and I was just like, when will action happen? I was so underwhelmed by this book and very disappointed. It makes me very hesitant going into Queen of Air and Darkness because I don't know if I'm going to end up liking this series by her. I don't know how I feel about that. It's very weird to not like one of your favorite author's books so much, to be so disappointed by one of their books. It's I've never had this feeling before and I don't like it. It's a weird wrestling of emotions. I'm very unhappy with where this series is going and how this book was written and what it included and just how certain things weren't included and we didn't really get answers to anything and there are still so many theories and I didn't feel like anything was really resolved. Such a sad way to end this video. So that is it. Those are my top eight. This is seven eight most disappointing reads of 2017. I would love to know what books you are most disappointed by. Well, I wouldn't love to know that, but if we have any similar books that we were disappointed by, or if you were very disappointed by a book you thought was going to be a favorite, tell me what it was in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye!